I see you. Hey there, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Mr. Ulrich's LandofBiology.com. I am Mr. Ulrich. Today we're going to be looking at genetics, the language of life, introducing you to kind of the broad topics of genetics, what we're going to be talking about throughout the rest of this unit. So, of course, if we're going to start out talking about genetics, we better define it. What is genetics? Really? Right now? Write it down in your notebook. Hit pause. I'll wait. Okay, if you wrote down something like genetics is the study of genes, we got to get something clear. All right. I need to know more than you can take apart the word genetics to know that we're talking about the study of genes. I need to know that you know that we're not talking about these genes. I need to know that you know that we're not talking about these genes. All right. I need to know that you know that we're talking about these genes over here. So, again, going deeper than study of genes, please define genetics. Hit pause. I'll wait. Okay, we're going to be studying genetics, so a good way to define genetics would be by looking at what are the things about genetics and genes that we're going to be looking into. So one of the questions that we're going to be talking about are how are genes passed from one generation to another generation? So there we're going to be talking about how things are inherited. And not just how things are inherited, but what is the probability that you're going to get a particular gene or set of genes or genetic characteristic even. Uh, we're also going to talk about how genes affect the way we look and function, so exactly how do genes give us traits like brown eyes and blue eyes. And we're also going to look at how we can kind of get in and mess with genes uh, to get things to turn out the way we want them to do, kind of uh, where we're going with genetics. Well, I've spoken enough about genes we haven't defined them yet. Um, you probably remember from reproduction and development, hopefully you do, that a gene is a section of DNA that encodes for a particular protein. And that protein determines a particular trait. If you're asking yourself trait, what's a trait? Well, a trait is the result of the presence or absence of a particular protein. Um, sometimes we can see it in the case of like uh, the colors of eyes or the color of uh, uh, pea pods, which we'll get to later, um, we could see that. But most genes actually code for things that we never really think about or see, things like receptor molecules and antibodies and uh, uh, all kind of enzymes, all kinds of stuff that we don't really think about. So the gene is a sequence of DNA. The trait is the expression of the protein that the DNA actually encodes for our makes. So we know that it's actually the proteins that are going to influence the traits themselves. That means that it's going to be different genes that are going to cause different proteins to cause different traits. So for something like eye color, brown eyes comes from an, a, a gene that codes for a protein that causes eyes to be brown, whereas uh, blue eyes actually comes from a lack of the gene that codes for that particular protein. Uh, so we got these two different forms of a gene. One causes a protein to be formed, one does not cause a protein to be formed, and it's that difference that's going to cause brown eyes or blue eyes. And so we call those two different genes, we call them alleles. So they're kind of like different forms of a gene um, that can influence a, a, a trait. The classic trait, of course, is eye color. That's what I keep bringing up. So whether things are um, brown eyes or blue eyes. Um, it's important to keep in mind that a gene actually encodes for a protein. We have what's called a one gene, one polypeptide hypothesis. Uh, we're simplifying it here to one protein. Um, I'm sure you'll get into that in later years. Each nucleus, where that, all that DNA, all the genes and genetic material is uh, typically located, each nucleus has all of the information uh, all of the genetic information that every other cell in the body has, with a few exceptions, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But that's a lot of information. 
a lot of information that has to get crammed in there. And each time the cell divides, that information has to be organized just so that you can get an equal set of information on each uh, in each new cell. Think about it if your book bag, which many of you just chuck your stuff into, if, you're, if you had to go through your book bag and make a copy of that so that there would be an identical piece of each paper, of each note, uh, of each handout, of each thing in that book bag, and in the same order how long that would take you to do. And these cells have to do that in pretty short periods of time. So that's a lot of information that has to be crammed into uh, a nucleus into a way that has to be organizable. So the way that the, that the information is uh, held in eukaryotic cells is uh, long strands of DNA, which we call chromatin, um, just during um, meiosis, during cell division, when this uh, organization really needs to be uh, called into play, uh, because we're going to make a new cell. Uh, those long strands of chromatin condense into chromosomes. All right. In the case of this uh, cell, which looks like it's getting ready to divide, those chromosomes are double chromosomes. And so that means that each leg, which we call sister chromatids, um, are going to be the result of the replication of that DNA. So each uh, sister chromatid is exactly the same as the other. So all of the genetic information that's on one chromatid should be exactly the same as the information that's on the other chromatid. Uh, to get a little bit deeper into how um, all of that stuff is kind of crammed in there, uh, the DNA gets coiled around uh, special proteins called histones, uh, little blobs of protein. And so the DNA coils around those like little spools. And then those uh, little spools are kind of like uh, strings of pearls. And that strings of pearls then gets coiled like a phone cord. And then that coiled phone cord, which is actually coiled, coiled, coils, um, gets folded into um, and smooshed together into that chromatid. So it's kind of like uh, when you grab onto, um, when you I see on a cartoon when they grab onto the thread uh, of someone's sweater and you pull on it and eventually you end up with a pile of thread and the person doesn't have a sweater on anymore. Um, so that's quite a bit of information that gets crammed in, and that's why it has to be coiled and coiled and coiled uh, to get stuck in there. So how many chromosomes exactly do we have? Well, if you're a human, uh, when we're looking at a body cell in a human, uh, they're going to have 46 chromosomes, and they're going to be arranged in 23 pairs. Um, when we get more into Mendelian genetics, we'll talk about uh, where you get each one of those pairs from, as you get each one from. Um, so the way that you get those individual uh, chromosomes in each one of those pairs is, are from those gametes. So gametes in our bodies, uh, eggs and sperm cells, uh, are going to have the single chromosomes uh, so that when the egg and sperm get together, you have 23 pairs. To throw some vocabulary out there, we have uh, gametes because the gametes have the sperm and egg cells because they have one set of each pair of alleles. We call those haploid. Uh, and when the gametes fuse, when uh, the 23 chromosomes uh, from the sperm and the 23 chromosomes from the egg get together, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes. We call that diploid. Uh, and that's a zygote or a fertilized egg. To recap some of the important vocabulary that we've covered here, we talked about genes, genes being those sections of DNA that code for a particular trait. Um, we know that they actually code for proteins. We're going to get more into the specifics of how the code of bases in DNA is read into a sequence of amino acids in a particular protein later. Uh, but for now, we need to know that those different proteins, uh, that different genes uh, make, can influence uh, the same trait or the same kind of trait like eye color. So you can have a gene that uh, codes for a protein that makes brown eyes and a different gene, a different allele that uh, codes for uh, well, the lack of that protein so you end up with blue eyes. In a zygote, which is a fertilized egg, the important thing for us to know is that the alleles come in pairs whereas in the, in the gametes, those sex cells, the sperm and eggs, uh, those alleles are single. 
we'll stop there before we get into our next video. Uh, thanks again for stopping into Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology .com. If you have any feedback or any material that you want to add for extra credit, uh, please send it to K Ulrich at newpults.k12.ny.us. Uh, of course, you can get all uh, the supporting information and good stuff like that on Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology .com. But till next time, we'll see you in class.